Hi, this is Stuart Cooper, and today we're going to talk about fixed rate versus adjustable rates. And let's face it, you know, when it comes to when it comes to choosing a mortgage, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So my goal here is to show you and educate you the differences between a fixed rate and the adjustable rate, so that you can make informed decisions going forward on choosing the right type of loan program that kind of helps you on your specific needs and wants. So let's just talk about it real quickly. 30-year fixed rate by far most popular program in the U.S. And the key benefit is is uh, by no doubt the fact that it's fixed for 30 years. You never have to worry about the the payment changing you know exactly what the payment's going to be from the day for very first payment to the very last payment so there's a lot of comfort in that knowing that your payments never going to change the downside on a fixed rate is that typically you're going to pay a little bit higher interest rate anywhere from about a quarter point to even as high as a, a point higher and the reason for that is because the banks are uncertain about what rates are going to do in the future so it's a little bit more of a riskier loan to give you a fixed rate for 30 years so that's the fixed rate so now the adjustable rate is a more complex type of loan and it takes a little bit more of a deeper understanding of exactly how it works, but you should definitely look at it. So the, the, um, the adjustable rates, there's a lot of stigma against them because they do adjust at some point and that's where it can be really scary. So this is kind of, let's just kind of talk about how adjustables work. So typically adjustables right now, they're all based off the SOFAR index or most lenders use the SOFAR index. That's the secured overnight financing rate. It's kind of like a, it's an overnight treasury bond lending rate that banks charge each other so that's how it's based off of the and then what happens is adjustables are the the rate when it adjusts is based off what they call the margin plus index now the margin is what the bank charges in addition to the index so it could be anywhere from about two and a half to three percent and then the index is what it's it was added to it to get the um, the actual rate. So right now the SOFAR index is uh, 1.4715. So if, the, if you had a loan today and it was adjusting as of July 17, 2022, you'd be around about 4.22%, somewhere around there, right? So that's what the rate would be. Now the SOFAR index, typically what happens is after the initial fixed period is over, it usually can adjust once every six months. So 2% and usually 2% cap per year. All right, so let's just walk you through this. Uh, there's a five year, seven year, and a 10 year adjustable rates typically on mortgages. So it's fixed for that first period of time. So it's either gonna be fixed for five, seven, or 10 years. Um, we're gonna focus on the 10 year because I, I love the 10 year program. And then we're gonna look at it compared to a fixed rate. We're gonna demystify some of the questions that people have about adjustable rates. And we're gonna show you how much you would save based on real market conditions as of today. So let's just jump right into this. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just look at some examples and I'm gonna compare the 30 year fixed rate to two 10 one arms or actually one 10 year arm. Uh, so you can see here, $1.3 million purchase, 20% down. So your loan amount's a million 40. It's gonna be the same case for all, for all scenarios. And then we have an interest rate on a 30 year fixed rate at 4.875% at zero points. And then I did one at 4.625 with a little bit of cost, more higher closing costs. And then here's the 10 year arm that we talked about. Uh, four and a quarter percent, so that's what five eighths of a difference in rate. And then I also did one at four percent with the borrower paying a point. Uh, and then we can just break it down here. And this is where you really want to look at numbers and you want to look at the breakdown. And it doesn't make sense to buy the rate down, you know, and pay higher upfront costs. But for right now, we can have the 30 year fixed rate 4.875. That's the most expensive rate because, um, or most expensive payment because it's um, the highest interest rate. That's why the monthly net savings is zero. Uh, you can see how a quarter point would save you about one hundred and fifty-seven dollars a month. But here's the takeaway: if we look at if we look at this program right here, um, you can see that the ten-year arm at four and a quarter is going to roughly save you three hundred eighty-eight dollars per month compared to this this program right here. So pretty significant savings. $388 a month, and then this is just showing you if you paid a point and got the lower rate. So you can see the benefit of the 10-year arm over the next 10 years would save you quite a bit of money. And if we break it down into a, the 10-year analysis, you can see exactly how much money you would save compared to these options. So when you're when you're looking at different loan options, it's key to look at different options as far as different cost structures because you can see the benefit over time. Uh, so you can see here the 30-year fixed rate right there. How much you're going to totally total cost is going to be four hundred sixty nine thousand. That's 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 the closing cost plus all the interest that you paid equals this number. And then if we look at the ten year arm, same closing cost, uh, but obviously you had you saved quite a bit of money. And then this is just a little bit better because you paid higher closing cost, but you actually did save money even with the higher cost. So that just kind of breaks it all down. And now we're gonna now we're gonna look at another another section. 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna break it all down for you so you can see exactly what the, the adjustable rate looks like compared to the fixed rate over the 10 years, the first 10 years. So remember, the first 10 years of the adjustable rate was fixed, just like the 30 year. So you're gonna see some significant differences in, um, in costs associated with both loans. So here we have 4.875, and I'll just highlight all this stuff so you can see it. You can see here, 30 year fixed rate, Right, your loan balance after 10 years, $842,753. Your payments made, your total payments, principal and interest payments made, $660,452. You paid $463,205 of interest, and the principal paid was $197,247. So that's just following the normal amortization of a 30 year fixed rate. And then what we did is, whenever we have a 10 year arm, so for the first 10 years, this rate was actually fixed as well. So the, um, you're going to get the benefit of the lower interest rate. So what happens is when you break this down, you'll see the loan balance is actually lower by $16,543 at $826,210. Your payments made was only $613,941, and that's because your payment was $380 something dollars cheaper per month. And now look at the interest paid. It was only $400,151, and then the principal paid was considerably higher, 213790 which means just comparing the first 10 years between these two loans, your interest saved was $63,054, right? And your loan balance is reduced by $16,543. So, I mean, it shows you the, the value of a 10-year arm compared to a 30-year fix, at least over the first 10 years, because remember, they're both fixed, so we haven't, we haven't dealt with the, the negative side effect of, a, of an adjustable rate, and we're gonna, we're gonna go there in a minute. Now, one of the things I've always shared with clients is, um, you know, when you're looking at fixed rate versus adjustable rates, I've always said, well, we know what the fixed rate is. So if you're going to go with the fixed rate, this is going to be your payment. All right. So that's that kind of makes sense. If you if you choose a fixed rate, you know exactly what you're paying. So I go, so look at this from a perspective of what if you what if you took the adjustable rate, but you made your payment based on the 30 year fixed payment. Right. So in this illustration, what we did here is we take the same interest rate. But now what we're doing is the, the monthly savings of that $380 or whatever, something like that, it was, I think it was around 380, 388 or so, we're going to apply that toward principal reduction every month. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically make the exact same payment as the 30-year fixed rate. That's the beauty of this strategy is you're making the very exact same payment as a 30-year fixed rate. But look what happens now. So now the loan balance by doing that is reduced to 768,378 and you compare that to 842,000 dollars 753 pretty significantly lower right and if you look at the payments and this is like this is kind of interesting 660,452 which is identical to the 30 year fixed payments because what we did is we took the difference and we applied it toward the principal reduction so your actual outlay of capital every month is exactly the same as the 30 year fixed rate but see now what we're doing is we're actually attacking the principal quicker and paying down the loan quicker so now look at the interest paid 388,830 versus 463,205, it becomes quite apparent that this is a fantastic strategy. Principal paid 271,622 compared to 197,247. And I can't, I can't tell you enough that, remember, this is you making the exact same payment as the 30-year fixed rate. But look at the benefit right now. Now you're at a $74,374 difference. And so this is a great strategy because there's no additional payments made. You're making the exact same payment as the 30-year fixed rate. And if we go down a little bit further, we're gonna talk about worst case scenario now. All right, because remember I told you we were gonna we were gonna talk about that. So we already know the 30-year fixed rate's never gonna change. So your payment's always gonna be 5404, but now we gotta deal with the downside of an adjustable rate. What's the worst possible scenario? And what we're doing here is remember the, the, the adjustable rate has a 5% cap on how high it could go. So if it started at four and a quarter, the highest it could ever go is nine and a quarter percent. And there's only 20 years left on it. So basically what we did is we took the loan balance and figured out 20 year amortization based off nine and a quarter. And you can see your payment goes up quite a bit. So it goes up $2,063 above the fixed rate. So it's a $2,063 increase over the over this, which is a 37.49% increase. And that is definitely a very scary number. And that's what you need to be aware of. All right. So that's, that's the difference. But 
remember, since we've had the loan for 10 years, you paid down the you paid you've saved yourself sixty three thousand sixty four dollars, which in essence means that now you're going to start giving it back. So if you're giving back an extra two thousand sixty three dollars every month, it's going to take you thirty one months before you actually start getting into a negative territory where the fixed rate would have been a better option. So that's what that's what this illustrates. But now. To combat that, and this is why I love this strategy, is because you know we, we never know what the rates are going to do in the future. And of course, this is worst case scenario. So with a reduction strategy, we took that savings every month and we just applied it toward the principal. So the beauty of this strategy is, is when you re-amortize the loan over 20 years, you're basing it off a loan balance that's lower of 768378 right? So now your payment's going up only $1,534 over the 30-year fixed rate. So not, not as significant as the, as the 2063. It's a 1534 increase or roughly about 27.86% increase over the 30-year fixed rate. But remember, we saved $74,374. So if I took $74,374 and, and divided by you know 1534, that gives me that makes me gives me an extra comfort room of an additional 48 months which is what, four years extra? So that means you're not gonna break even on this strategy at worst case scenario to year 14. That's why the 10 year option is sometimes it's a really good option to take a look at because like I said, this is based on worst case scenario. And when I say worst case scenario, what we're saying is after at payment 120, your rate's gonna go up 1% every six months until you reach nine and a quarter percent and it's gonna stay there for the life of the loan. So in conclusion, um, I hope this information is really useful and I like to use worst case scenario because we really don't know what rates are going to do. All I can do is tell you that rates most likely will go up from, from the start point because they typically do. Usually rates fluctuate, you know, one, two percent every year, up and down every year. So it's 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 not realistic that the rates could stay at nine percent for the life of the loan for the next 20 years. But I mean, theoretically, it could happen. So I would never say never. But um, at least this gives you an idea of what the rates could do and what the potential savings are in the beginning of the loan and then what, what could possibly happen down the road that's why I love that strategy about doing the principal reduction because if you're if you're okay with the 30-year fixed rate and you're willing to make that payment then they take the 10-year take the savings apply it and your balance is dramatically lower so if you end up selling the property refinancing it in the first 10 years and then after after 10 years it's really you know it's up to the market but you, at least you have the worst case scenario so you can make informed decisions so I hope you like this information please subscribe and like my channel if you like the information and have a great week guys thank you